right, a few different topics today we're going to cover, one of them being Hurricane Bonnie, a very rare and record-breaking storm. We are going to talk about why this is being talked about in the news, even though Bonnie is no threat to land as we speak. We are also going to touch base on the eastern half of the United States and the insane seismic activity being reported over the last 24 hours. That's right, one day you are looking at all these different reports of the ground shaking. Some of these I will show you have been exploding meteors, a common theme we've been seeing on the eastern half of the United States over the last two years. In fact, we have one of those media reports right here along the upper eastern coast of the United States with a very cool video attached with it with something flying in the sky with this meteor. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And to keep the seismic activity topic going, we are looking at an activated buoy just south of the Alaskan chain islands. The second time this buoy has been activated in two days, we'll check the USGS and volcano discovery. And as I'm sure many of you know, we have a massive heat wave going on spanning 13 different states in the heart of the United States. This time of year begins the dog days of summer, the hottest 40 days we have all year long. And this heat wave has company, as you can see to the north by Lake Michigan, a fairly large low pressure system, creating some severe weather all the way from Minnesota across the Great Lakes, soon to make its way to the northeast, which again has been quite the hot spot for not just seismic activity, but meteor sightings. It's almost as if the northeast has become a magnet to severe weather situations and nature in general. I hope you're all having a great 4th of July. We're going to break this all down right here, right now. Let's Go! Alright everybody, happy 4th of July, happy Canada Day a few days ago. I hope everyone's enjoying the rest of their holiday weekend. We're going to start with this meteor sighting. This was actually back on the 28th, but the theme still stays the same. A lot of Northeast reports of meteor sightings, not only that, but the sonic booms, the exploding meteor. Now this particular one I don't think exploded, there were no sound reports, but what I want to show you is what looks to be an anomaly shooting out in front of the meteor before you see it angled down towards the trees here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and we're going to watch it all the way through first. You see the meteor coming towards the left right there very bright prominent meteor I'm gonna go ahead and click back again and what I want you to do is I want you to focus right in this area right here where I'm circling the mouse and then there's gonna be another flash right about in this area and this is all before the meteor comes in I'm gonna play it in real time for you right now keep an eye on that part of the screen flash flash you see that right there and then we got the meteor shooting down this way so it almost looks as if there was some sort of lead meteor or something before this meteor that was in the sky now it's definitely possible that this could be some sort of reflection from the meteor itself itself before it actually shoots down the screen. But again, focus your attention right here. I'm going to slow this down for you in just a moment. We'll play through it a few more times. I'll just go ahead and click the back button a few times, but you see those two flashes, almost three of them you can see, and it comes ahead of the meteor. It's very interesting. It looks like there's something shooting across the sky here. And keep in mind, these videos are shot in real time. It's not in super fast motion or slow motion. So this is definitely not some sort of airplane, but you can clearly see a reflection or some sort of object shooting across the sky in this type of direction right here. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to leave the link of this video in the description box so you guys can go look at it yourselves. I know it's a little hard to follow. It's a very faint blimp, but there is certainly something out there that is in front of this meteor and you can see it flash about three different times. Again, it can't be an airplane because it's skipping too much sky to be an airplane, especially when airplanes have those consistent light flashes that have the same amount of time in between. This is a succession of three quick flashes and then it fades away just before the meteor comes down on the left part of the screen. This this video is going to be a little rapid fire, so we're going to move on to the next topic now. Feel free to check that link out. Let me know what you think down below. I'm very curious about what this could be. And again, this taking place in the upper northeast, which like I said, has become a theme and a magnet to severe weather and these sky anomalies, especially the addition of seismic activity over the last two years. We've been seeing a complete uptick in ground shaking reports as well as the sonic booms. You're looking at the chart right now from Volcano Discovery over the last 24 hours. That's right. Every single one of these dots you see is a different seismic report that has taken place within the last day. If I go ahead and click two days, take a look at this. We almost double that number when we switch to the 48 hour mark. And something interesting is these straight lines you see, these kind of reports that are back to back, just hours apart from each other. Again, I will leave the link for this information in the description box. You can go read the user reports and actually read what people have felt. Some of them talking about their windows shaking and things falling off their shelves, stretching all the way from Maine down the eastern coast of the United States. We could see a heavy, dense cluster of these reports that really seem 
focused on the coastline. But if we take everything as a whole, you can basically separate the eastern half of the United States just from the Great Lakes east all the way to the coast. And the amount of reports is just nuts. And what adds to the mystery of all this is if we go to the USGS and we click on even seven days all magnitudes, all we see here is a few earthquakes. One of the significant ones being in South Carolina, a 3.2 took place just days ago. And besides that, we have a total of one, two, three, and then four up in Canada. Nowhere near the number that Volcano Discovery is showing us. And those have actual user reports where people come online and they fill out a report describing what they felt. And all you really need is two people reporting the same thing from the same area. And it's posted as a seismic event. Now, again, sometimes these could be sonic booms. We just took a look at a meteor flying across the sky and we've seen these explode before. We actually had one explode in southwestern Pennsylvania a few months ago. Pittsburgh, to be exact, a huge sonic boom explosion in the middle of the day. And over the last six months, we have made countless videos talking about these sonic booms where news stations and police departments are even getting involved because people call not knowing what is going on around them or why the ground is shaking so often. Again, we have the new Madrid fault line in this area of the United States. I'm not exactly saying that's what's causing this because it's a weird mixture of meteors and seismic events. And I just can't help but notice the uptick in these situations over the last two years. One more thing I wanted to point out about these reports on Volcano Discovery is the time frames in which they're being reported. If we click on some of these random ones, for example, here in Virginia, we have a report from 18 hours ago and the one right next to it was 12 hours ago. So a six hour difference, but both are within about 50 miles of each other. So that leads me to believe that there's something going on in this area of Virginia. Even if we move to the north a little bit, we click on this one seven hours ago, another report of the ground shake. And we'll go ahead and click on two of these in New Jersey. This one five hours ago in Southern New Jersey. And then the one just to the north of it, again, about 50 miles away, 19 hours ago near Philadelphia and the border of New Jersey. These reports are way too close for them to be coincidences. There's definitely something going on in the sky or under the ground that is causing these consistent situations to take place. All right. And now to finish up with the seismic activity topic, we are looking at an activated tsunami buoy just south of the Alaskan chain islands. You can see right here, this thing is still in activation mode. And if you look very closely, this is the second time in two days it's been activated. Not a huge signature. In fact, signatures like this could be caused by some sort of interaction with the buoy as far as a boat hitting it. Even sometimes sea life like sharks or whales can even touch these buoys and put them into activation mode. I just find it interesting that this buoy specifically was triggered twice in two days. We can go as far as even saying twice in the last 12 hours. These things go off for 24 hours and then they reset. But you can see here in the event details, we had a slight jerk upwards instead of downwards. So that kind of takes away the possibility of some sort of shark or something biting this and pulling it down. We would see a downward signature as opposed to a shot upwards. If we go over to the USGS, we can see there was an earthquake near this area about 100 miles away from the buoy itself a 4.7 near Attic, Alaska. This was on the third within that 24 hour period. So it's quite possible that this earthquake was the cause of the buoy going off. We have to remember 54 kilometers in depth is fairly deep. So I'm kind of up in the air about whether or not this earthquake could have caused enough shaking to set that buoy off. Again, we had two separate signatures in a 24 hour period. All right, and on to Hurricane Bonnie. That's right, we are now looking at a Pacific hurricane in Bonnie originating right here in the Atlantic side of Central America, crossing over Nicaragua. That's rare enough in itself. I'll show you an article supporting that, but it's very rare to see a storm that's not quite formed yet in these warm waters, then crossing over Nicaragua as a tropical storm and then reforming into a hurricane. We are now looking at a 90 mile per hour storm, 982 millibars. Again, no threat to land, but the fact that Bonnie crossed over this landmass right here and then reformed is rare in itself. Here's one of the articles talking about this. Bonnie roars to life as the East Pacific's third hurricane. If I scroll down here, I'm just going to read this to you very quickly. Hurricane Bonnie has put an unusual stamp in weather history. Following its formation in the southwestern Caribbean Sea, passage through Central America and emergence into the East Pacific Ocean, all within the span of 24 hours. This happened very quickly, and it's now considered the second named storm of the Atlantic season and then becoming the Eastern Pacific Ocean's next hurricane. So once again, the fact that Bonnie was able to cross Nicaragua and then reform is what they're calling rare. That does not happen too often, especially when the storm isn't quite formed yet. We got to remember Bonnie was a tropical storm, a fairly weak tropical storm when it 
did first interact with Nicaragua and then it actually got bigger over the country itself before exiting into the Pacific Ocean and then reforming as a hurricane. You can see over the next four days it's going to span out towards Hawaii. I don't think it'll quite make it there but check out what happens right behind it. Another formation of a storm is being projected. Now this one may make it to Hawaii and could be the fourth Pacific storm. We're going to keep an eye on this in the coming days as well. All right and last but not least before I let you guys go a massive heat wave spanning 13 different states as you can see on your screen right now. This is a county by county chart and it is fairly obvious that we are looking at a giant heat waves covering the heart of the United States. Now this is related to our 2022 monsoon season which as you can see is off to an early start. Heat dome to sizzle the interior rest and will also suppress these monsoon storms. Very quickly AccuWeather meteorologists expect temperatures to skyrocket across the Intermountain West heading into this weekend with a few locals potentially reaching their hottest levels of the year thus far. So basically in a nutshell what's being said is that this low pressure system up to the north of the heat wave. Remember the heat wave is right in this general direction. We'll take a look at it quickly here. You can see just under Minnesota is where it begins in Iowa and then the 13 states surrounding basically Mimal the Elf. What looks like a big elf in the middle of the country. Here's its nose. Here's its hat. Here's its feet by Louisiana. And it even has a belly button. Check that out. So coming back to the GFS chart we see the low pressure system up to the north of the heat bubble. And if we move into the 5th, 6th, and 7th we see this low pressure system cover the Great Lakes and then move into the northeast. This is what they're talking about as far as the heat bubble suppressing some of the monsoon rain that would in turn be stretching across the middle of the country but until that heat wave is gone that won't be happening. All right with that said that is the wrap up of this video. I did not intend on it being this long but you know how it goes sometimes there's just a lot to talk about. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video again I will have links in the description box to lead you to some of these websites I used to make this video and I hope at least it brought you some information you didn't know before. Shout out to Canada. I will see you all tomorrow more than likely a lot earlier than this but I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their holiday weekend happy 4th of July and I will see you all in the next video take care bye bye stop right there my friends if you have not already click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon click all and you will get all notifications from this channel and trust me you won't be disappointed